Cats Ed Midsole Bud here. Many a shoe has passed through my hands and feet over the last year or so. As such, I've amassed a great number of shoe boxes, but also some really good experiences in lots of different running shoes. If you're perhaps looking to get into running or to update your worn out shoes, you're in the right place. Today I've got for you my running shoe buyer's guide for 2023. Welcome to the channel and help us to continue growing by hitting that subscribe button, but also giving this video a thumbs up like. Dan Kishu. So you're in the market for a new running shoe, perhaps you're a beginner runner, you might be someone who's been running for ages, you just want to update your current shoes that might be worn out. Today I've got my full on buyer's guide for you for all the different options. We're going to start off with beginner options first, there's three or four that really stick out as great value do it all shoes. Perhaps if you're getting into running, you're doing a couch to 5k, maybe in preparation to do some 5 or 10k races, you could be someone that just likes getting out running for the sake of mental health and exercise. Straight out the blocks, we got the Float Ride Energy 5 from Reebok. Probably one of the best choices for you. Coming in about £75 here in the UK, though it is often discounted. It's got a nice average level of softness here in terms of that midsole. Decent outsole as well for some varied terrain. Reebok do a boatload of different colours of this one, but I particularly like this. I think it's got a really nice hue. Hard to look beyond this shoe really in terms of pure value if you're a beginner or an intermediate or experienced runner. Just scores highly really on practically everything you want from a daily running shoe. The Reebok Float Ride Energy 5. Another great value shoe, this one from Puma, the Velocity Nitro 2. If you're looking for a good daily shoe, grab this one or perhaps the previous version as well. This shoe again has got some good middle of the road compression in the midsole. Perhaps a little bit more resilient though than that Reebok model. I find the upper here on the Puma a little bit less constrictive than that Float Ride Energy 5. Perhaps a touch firmer ride here in the Velocity Nitro 2. Comfy, a little bit more plush than the Reebok and you can pick it up for as little as £40 here in the UK right now. Again, some good outsole versatility here. You do need to look for that in a daily shoe. Going to be perhaps running on some varied terrain and the Puma could work out well. So my second recommendation for a daily shoe, the Velocity Nitro 2. Nike on the list now, the Pegasus 40. This is the current version of their long-standing Pegasus model. For road and concrete paths, for a little more cash, you can pick up the Pegasus 40, the gold standard really in terms of Nike's running lineup. It's that do-it-all shoe, the one that you can use for practically anything even for casual use like I've been using it for. I do see people training in these and racing in them at local events, so don't discount them for that. Though rather than just a slab of foam here in the midsole section of the shoe, you do have some air units as well. There's one in the forefoot, one in the heel. They're supposed to provide a little bit more propulsion. I actually find that they make the shoe a little bit of a firmer ride, but a little bit more responsive, and I kind of like that. Again, the outsole here on the Pegasus is very versatile. That's a common factor about all the shoes I'm going to recommend for you in this section. The Pegasus is a bit more expensive, around about £100 here in the UK. There are some discounts though, do look around. It's the type of shoe you can probably get in Sports Direct or something, so go over there and just ask them to give it to you for less. They'll probably say no, but you can try. I'm only featuring shoes that I've actually tested out here. I'm not just speculating about models I've found on the internet. Adidas have that Adi Zero SL, which they market as their daily use shoe. I have tried that out. It wasn't saying that really worked for me. A little bit too firm. I just can't really recommend it over the other models right now. Perhaps if you're a heavier built runner, you're looking for a daily shoe, the Ultra Boost Lite could be good. Lots of viewers are telling me that that one is a shoe that they're enjoying a huge amount. If you're perhaps looking for a daily shoe with a little bit more stability, you couldn't go far wrong if you pick up the forever run nitro from puma might look like a huge midsole stack here but it isn't really i think you could use this one as a daily kind of driver if you just need some more stability elements from those silicon parts that sort of cup up and around the heel you can pick these up for as little as about 100 pounds here in the uk right now features two different types of that nitro material that we see in the velocity nitro 2 just provides a little bit more direction and containment if you perhaps have some pronation issues I mean, do people need stability shoes? Do they just make more problems than they actually solve? That's a question for another video, but I find this to be quite a subtle stability shoe. It's not really in your face. So in short, looking for a daily shoe, I would look actually underneath first. 
has it got some sort of outsole that's going to work on a variety of different surfaces for a daily shoe you're probably not going to want that maximum stack saying this a bit middle of the road it's not that maximum stack not something too minimal moving on to the next section now for those sort of longer runs for those training for a marathon you will no doubt be entering into the church of the sunday long run 16 18 20 plus miles of course thus you're going to need something with a more maximal stack there to reduce some of that impact just help to protect those legs a little bit more and aid in recovery now there's an absolute ton of these shoes right now so here's a bit of a whistle stop tour asics have got a bunch of these shoes the asics nimbus 25 perhaps a more stable long run experience in this one has a firmer more consistent midsole with some heel incorporated pure gel i think they've put that there to further absorb some of that shock the heel collar here is almost sofa like i suppose it's certainly one of the more plush upper shoes many viewers have commented about the outsole of the nimbus 25 it is incredibly durable so it should go on for miles and miles at the time of making this video in july 2023 you can pick these up on discount for around about 125 pounds if you're lucky so that's my first recommendation the a6 gel nimbus 25 another puma model here this one is the magnify nitro 2 recently released this one a little bit lighter and more nimble than the nimbus 25 and that toe box here at the front of the shoe is a damn sight more breathable i'm finding it a little less firm than the flight foam blast plus that we have in the nimbus 25 and it's coming in a little bit cheaper this one around about 120 pounds here in the uk a nice max cushion shoe not far off that 40 millimeter mark it's just a little bit less plush doesn't feel quite so present on foot. Another non-plated shoe here, but with lots and lots of cushion, the Triumph 21 from Saucony. It's just released over here in the UK and has a lovely middle of the road max cushion vibe. I'm finding that Power Run Plus material not to be too squashy, though it does have some nice bounce and compression. I think the Triumph's got a bit more of a daily sort of fit about it. You could probably use this as your sort of daily shoe as well. Not everyone's going to want this much stack back here, but you know what I mean. And there's less plush sort of materials around your foot here, certainly when you compare it up against the Asics. So I can have used their Power Run Plus material here for the midsole and the insole of the shoe that keeps things nice and light and nimble and it makes the triumph 21 stand out a little bit from the others an absolute banger up next the a6 super blast now this is one of the best shoes that i've reviewed in 2023 so far super light super durable as well it's a really exciting midsole combination here i can recommend it in terms of its max cushion properties but it also feels like a shoe that you could race in as well everything about it's kind of been weight relieved in terms of the upper so the leaving that extra weight to be used up by the midsole i used this to walk around london last weekend it really did save my legs ready for a pb on the next day though it is a costly shoe at 200 earth credits it's going to be one for those people that are perhaps a little bit more invested in their running very good model this one versatile as well you can use it for pretty much anything i suppose longer runs and some racing no reason why not the a6 super blast for max cushion though it's almost impossible to overlook the invincible run three from nike it's the king of cushion and squash it has a really top outsole that just keeps on rocking with a nice depth and it's amongst the best you can get ready for this type of use certainly from my perspective yes it's another expensive shoe it's around about 180 pounds here in the uk depending on the colorway that you go for and i think it is one of those love it or hate it shoes some people get it on foot and just find it too squashy i found it to be a brilliant long run shoe by the third iteration simply one of the most cushioned available though it is a bit on the heavier side i think that the super blast may dethrone the invincible run three by the end of the year though okay we're going to move to the opposite end of the spectrum now for those shoes for speed workouts something that's a little bit closer to the ground some more response there and certainly those lower stack more nimble shoes Reviewed recently, the Adios 8 from Adidas fits that mould perfectly. If you want something with very low weight and a glove-like upper fit for racing and training, this is your shoe. I think 120 quid as well is a really good price point for the Adios 8. I think it's going to give tons of value, especially with that very sticky and grippy continental rubber on the outsole. This uses two of the Three Stripe brand softer midsole materials, and it's all the better for it. Light Strike 2.0 in the heel and Light Strike Pro in the forefoot. It's a really great shoe for pace workouts and some racing as well the adios 8 
Just put my review out for this one, the Brooks Hyperion. Very similar shoe, really, in terms of its midsole stack to the Adios 8. This time a nitrogen-infused midsole material with some really sticky rubber on the outsole. Super simple fit and a lower profile, so if that's the type of shoe you like around your foot, I'm also expecting some really good durability from the rubber here. I got almost no wear on my original version of the Hyperion Tempo some years back. So just released this one. I'm still getting some more miles into it, but I think it's going to be one I'm going to recommend towards the end of the year. Those after some extreme value, look for the Puma Liberate Nitro 2. This has a slightly lower drop than some of the other Puma shoes, and it really does feel like a shoe you want to go fast in maybe some 5 or 10k racing you could even use it for some track work i guess so the outsole is really well set up for that you can pick these up around the 80 pounds mark and i think it makes for a shoe that's going to work for those sort of lighter runners rather than the heavier set ones if you need a nimble shoe something that just sort of disappears on foot then the liberate nitro 2 is right up your street again i've not tried out every shoe under the sun this is all stuff that i've actually worn and tested and reviewed so so you might have heard this term plated running shoes well there's two different types you've got these nylon or composite plated shoes and then carbon plate shoes that are often used for high speed training or racing there's a few interesting options here that i've tested out over the last few months that could save you a few bucks First up, the Puma Deviate Nitro 2. The Puma Deviate Nitro 2 has a composite carbon plate here and some more compressive foam elements that make it a great, more versatile running shoe. Probably be used by a few more runner types than some of the other more rigid shoes. With that composite carbon plate here, you've got a little bit more flexibility available in the Deviate Nitro 2. Puma are also rock solid in terms of the outsole rubber they use on their running shoes. Lots of grip here, so don't worry too much on that foot. You can grab these for as little as about £100 right now if you shop around, though the discounts will vary from place to place and colorway to colorway the other shoe that really hits the spot for me in that sort of mold with a nylon plate this time is the endorphin speed 3 from Saucony. i have switched out the laces on my pair here they normally come with some sort of springy elastic laces so the nylon plate here has actually been sort of expanded in the midfoot area to improve the stability people that are after a very squashy and compressive yet still reasonably stable midsole shouldn't look further than this one much lighter than the Deviate Nitro 2, yet they feel quite different on foot in fairness. It's a little bit more rebound in that shoe. In this one, it feels very squashy. Though the Puma shoe doesn't have that exposed midsole area here on the outsole, which is going to limit the durability somewhat. Again, this is a shoe that is often discounted, around about 115 earth credits here in the UK right now. Good value for such a high quality shoe, and it's got some race potential as well. A bit of an outlier for me, I reviewed about a year ago, is the Zoom Fly 5. Not the biggest fan of that one but many love that shoe there's a carbon plate here though this time nike very much of this down as a trainer rather than a racer it's a more dense cushion with the chopped up zoom x foam can be found for as little as 110 pounds if you shop around it's like a more controlled version of a plated shoe with less squash now onto the carbon plate shoes now i've got to be honest in 2023 these are all a bit of a much of a muchness people have copied the design that we first saw a few years back every brand's got one now highlights for me are probably the hoka rocket x2 it has a lower five millimeter drop from heel to toe super soft foam as well here in the hoka i'm glad that they've updated their race shoes to use this stuff the plate here appears to provide a little bit of stability due to that soft foam but also some propulsion as you tow off Though at the moment it does have a particularly unmovable £220 price tag. So see if you can find a discount code or something if you want to pick up this one. Another carbon plated shoe that I really love and have reviewed over the last year is the Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2. It's a soft yet controlled cushion here in the Puma. It's a brilliantly simple upper and at the price point of 180 it's actually a really good shoe and great value for that. One of the most versatile plated shoes on the market today. Now this shoe kind of grew on me over time. I'm still not dead set on the upper, but yeah, I can run fast in it, that's for sure. The Vaporfly 3. It's super light, though less stable in the heel than two of the other shoes I've mentioned so far. But when it comes to sort of bounce and the leg saving abilities of this one, it's right up there in terms of performance. But also in terms of price at 235 big ones. You've got to be pretty invested to want to pick this shoe up. So 
maybe leave it down the line a little bit. If you don't like the bigger sort of in-your-face brands, you want to try something a bit different, you could pick up the Under Armour Flow Velocity Elite. This one's proven very durable so far, actually. I think it's down to that sort of dual midsole here. You've got this really sort of soft P-back section on top of that flow material underneath. It's a little bit firmer, a little bit more resilient. I've been enjoying this one in terms of reps and intervals at faster pace. I'm really keen to see what Under Armour do with this shoe over the coming years, how they sort of switch it up. It's a bit of an overlooked one, this one. Go and check it out. If you can pick one up at discount, it's worth a try. Now, there's some other options out there that are a mixture of max cushion and play the Primex Strung from Adidas, for example. That one towers above some of the others in terms of the actual height. And it's got a new upper that's like 3D printed yarns. Very interesting. I don't think that shoes for everybody. It's one that you need to be quite a neutral runner for. If you've got any stability problems there, you could turn your ankle. And it's also extremely expensive at £230. So again, it's one of those shoes that you've got to put a lot of investment into. If you're perhaps starting out, pick up the Reebok or the Pegasus or something, that'll probably do you fine. It's one of those shoes that exposes any sort of weaknesses in terms of your ankles, your knees, just strength and balance in general. You got other shoes out there like the Alpha Fly 2, that's probably outgoing right now. I had some mixed experiences in that shoe. I don't think I can really recommend it at its retail price. It might come down in price soon when they launch the Alpha Fly 3. Okay, that's pretty much everything that I've reviewed over the last year or so. Well, at least all the shoes I kind of want to recommend right now. Tested out a lot of stuff. Some of it works well, some of it not so well. Let me know your experiences in some of these shoes and perhaps some other alternatives as well down in the comments. Quick musical interlude for you. Worth checking out is the new album from Tinaruwen. They've got a couple of tracks on here that feature Daniel Lanois. Really worth listening to some interesting guitar movements. Totally different to a lot of popular culture guitar, which has become sort of over-compressed and simplified. This feels really free. Feels like the type of music you could actually put on go and do some of those long runs I was talking about earlier. I've been a fan of this group from Mali for a long time. They've been putting out albums for years and years. I think I picked one up back in... 2006 maybe something like that seemed like yesterday but it's not it's a long time ago i love the production here as well it's really sort of open and wide you can hear all of the instruments going on some really nice percussion too i'm not sure how you pronounce the album title but i'll stick it on the screen here thanks for tuning in people hope this video helped out in some way please hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up like it helps us out a lot my name's ed bird and i'll be seeing you